Welcome to the second episode of Raising Rebecca Books, The Birth of a Publishing House. This is the audio story of me, Rebecca Seitz, building a traditional royalty-paying publishing house from the ground up, told to you as it unfolds. You'll hear from the authors, agents, printers, editors, marketers, salespeople, designers, all of the team members that are needed to take words from an idea in a writer's mind to a book in a reader's hand. It's the first full week of December as I record this. Over the weekend, my family and I went to a snow fest where, in the balmy 85-degree day of our little beach town, we snagged handfuls of snow from the trucked-in supply and we threw snowballs at each other. I seem to live in congruity in all levels of my life. I mean, who in this economy would think that starting a book publishing business is a good idea? And even if they did, who would limit it to women writers 40 and over writing business and romance books about women 40 and over. And even if you were crazy enough to think that all of those were great ideas, why would you ever consider announcing it right at the start of the holiday season? If you knew me better, you'd know the 45 years of stories in my life that only make sense in the last chapter, not on page one. I suppose I'm just someone who enjoys throwing snowballs in sunshine. You're listening to Raising Rebecca Books, The Birth of a Publishing House on the 1C Story Network. 1C is made possible in part by the support of the following sponsor. When I founded 1C Productions, which is the audio and visual production arm of the 1C Story Network, On December 13th, 2019, I had one guiding thought. Let it happen. See, before founding 1C, I was a pusher. Whether it was growing my publicity firm or leading a film and TV development company, I made things happen. I cajoled people into getting on board. I persuaded financiers to participate. I coaxed media to provide coverage. I enlisted leaders to join committees and governing boards. You know what I mean? I lived in cheerleader mode, day in and day out, sun up to well beyond sundown. I reveled in being someone who made things happen. I had just turned 41 when I incorporated 1C, and frankly, I was tired. Not of storytelling. That that never tires me. No, I was exhausted with constantly working to make things happen. And so I sat down. I decided that with this new company, I would go about things in a radically, well, okay, well, radically for me, different way. No longer would I make things happen. Instead, I would let them happen. I did not adhere to this new philosophy faithfully right away. I still have to call myself back to it from time to time. See, I've come up in male-created, male-dominated spaces. Book publishing, film, television. Conquer and dominate is the name of the game. Control, push, drive, get them in line, make it happen. I went full bore into that approach without ever stopping to notice it or consciously choose that way of being. It is the antithesis of who and how I am, though. Now, I'm not unique in this. Many women operate differently than men, naturally, and there are numerous reasons for it. But I found a particular study from the University of California at Irvine fascinating. It showed that men's brains have about six and a half times more gray matter than women's brains. Now, calm down, calm down. Women's brains have nearly ten times more white matter than men's. Now, gray matter in the brain acts like information processing centers, but white matter, that's where the connections between the processing centers happens. We women, our brains are more innately equipped than men's to see how the threads weave together into a beautiful tapestry. And as I thought about this study, I began to see why the approach of letting things happen, as opposed to making them happen, resonated with me. 
because I instinctively know that elements work together of their own accord. I know that, so I find it easy to rest and operate in the expectation of that occurrence. I don't need to push things into existence. I merely need to accept the threads into my hands and trust that other hands are doing the same and that all together we end up weaving an exquisite tapestry. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Because I want to make sure you don't think this is an audio diary of making something happen, of me or anyone on this team dominating and conquering and controlling or pushing this publishing house or any element of it into existence. Nope. I'm here to share with you the incredible journey of letting a business happen. Now, I promised you an audio diary of what's going on each week at Rebecca Books, and here it is. I started last week by meeting with a woman who nearly worked herself to death before stepping off the corporate life treadmill. She realized she was making career decisions based on what would bring her recognition, praise, and lots of money, and that none of those guidelines were making space for what really mattered, her own health and well-being. Look, making money to pay the bills and avoid financial stress is a part of health and well-being, yes. But making money purely to build a bigger pile than the next person is a different goal entirely, you know? When she stepped off that belt, she began to evaluate what she truly enjoyed doing and how she could do that in service toward her community. She has since built a thriving business that both pays the bills and meets her personal health and relationship needs. Along the way, she learned valuable lessons, not only about building a business based on personal values, but also how to do it as a perimenopausal and now menopausal woman. Our meetings are spent honing her ideas for the book she's writing that I believe will be of enormous benefit to all of us who are waking up to our own need to go about work and life differently than we did the first half of our years. And then midway through the week, I had a call with the international printer that we have chosen to use. We have both a domestic and an international printer lined up. As I went about sourcing these relationships, though, I found that I needed to pose questions outside the scope of the typical vendor interview. Yes, it was important that they carry the paperweights and types that we want, that their turnaround times fall well within our publishing timelines, that their per book costs don't make our budgets and forecasts implode, and that they have a, you know, a well-established history of excellent performance. But beyond that, I posed two big questions for every single printer that I interviewed. First, are your papers and inks sustainably sourced. See, I'd rather not kill the planet in order to print books, and if I didn't ask this question, I could inadvertently put Rebecca Books in a position of paying people who are acting outside the company's ecological values. The second question was, what, if any, portion of your company is owned and or led by women? One gentleman, when I asked this question, he he sat quietly for several seconds. And then he told me that his secretary was a woman and her husband owned a fair portion of the company. And that experience reminded me that even though I ask the questions, it's important to remember that when I say we value female leadership and ownership here, those terms might have completely different definitions for the person with whom I'm speaking. In the end, I am ridiculously thrilled to have selected both a domestic and an international printer that are women-led. One is owned by a woman. The other is a multi-generational company founded by a man, but which, now in its third generation, has put that founder's granddaughter in the CEO spot. These companies were easily able to show me not only that they operate in a sustainable, eco-friendly fashion, but how they do so. I finished out the week on Thursday with a long, productive call. See, I've been talking with this woman for quite a few weeks about the possibility of her coming aboard as an acquisitions editor here at Rebecca Books. 
we've needed to navigate through lots of details, like how this work meshes with other projects, both in her life and mine, what the expectations are from each of our perspectives, the compensation package, the way I want Rebecca Books to operate differently in terms of work hours and time commitment, prioritizing employee health above all. In accordance with that last one, I did not work on Friday. It was my birthday, and I spent the day, as I've done each of my birthdays for the last decade, with a book, my journal, and a pen at the beach, followed by some alone time, wandering stores and other spaces I enjoy, and finishing with a home-cooked meal with my kiddos and hubs. It has taken years for my work-driven pusher self to have days like that and not feel guilty about taking them. I mean, even as I tell you about it, I wonder how many people listening to this will roll their eyes and think of it as lazy or not conducive to building a true profitable business entity. But remember, I started this approach four years ago, this let it happen. I've now lived into the truth that rest and relaxation are necessary and required, not only so that my own brain is equipped to do the fabulous things that it does with all that extra white matter, but also so that space is made to let all those other hands that are holding threads contribute to the design. See, while I journaled, I read, and I listened to the waves on Friday, feeling the warm sun upon my skin, embracing gratitude for all that has been and is after 46 years on this spinning rock, 20 of them spent in the storytelling industries. Some woman somewhere else is putting the finishing touches on her book proposal. Another one is typing the end on her novel. Another is reading through the financial document that allows her to invest in this venture. Another is going over her notes in preparation for our upcoming mentoring session later this week. And still another is pressing send on the email containing her print quote for several thousand copies of a Rebecca Books title. And yet another is emailing me her availability to discuss helping with promotional efforts for Rebecca Books. While I lean back on my hands, dig my fingers into the sand, and let the sea breeze lift my graying hair, other hands are diligently weaving their threads into this great tapestry. Not because I pushed them or persuaded them to, but because I wove my thread and then I respected and honored them, weaving theirs of their own accord. Does this sound crazy? Nuts? (laughs) Woo-woo? Maybe. But I did warn you, I like to throw snowballs in the sunshine. You've been listening to Raising Rebecca Books, the birth of a publishing house from the 1C Story Network. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts and learn more at rebeccabooks.com. That's R-E-B-E-C-A books.com. Story Network for the love of stories.